Pokemon Red with only one coughing was surprisingly fast, so now it's time for a rough one. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Platinum with a team of only one Obama Snow? Obama Snow is a pretty well-rounded Pokemon in terms of stats, but his real weakness is being Ice and Grass type. He's weak to seven different types and has a double weakness to Fire. We'll be starting with Snover, so his level up move list is not bad and gets pretty strong, although even with TMs, the type coverage is going to be pretty limited. He also doesn't evolve until level 40, so it'll take a while before we get kinda strong. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I think that I'm going to get stuck on Flint, the Fire Elite 4 member. Maybe Water Pulse can take him out, but I'm pretty skeptical. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only get one Snover or Obama Snow. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Let's do this. And yes, you guys all requested this one because of the infamous moment in my Pikachu Platinum run. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Piplup with Snover so that we can do the whole run with it. I made him use a Turtwig rather than Chimchar because I'd probably just lose the run if he had Chimchar. I named mine Obama Snow because he can't truly be Snowbama until he evolves. Ours is serious nature, so neutral stats. Our ability is Snow Warning, so it's always hailing. Although it's nice, it does massively slow down every single battle we're going to do all game including while grinding. Genuinely, this will add a lot of time to the run. Lastly, while we have to get a few levels in, we've got Powder Snow, Leer, and Razor Leaf. Powder Snow and Razor Leaf have the same power, but Powder Snow has a 10% chance to freeze, and Razor Leaf has an extra critical hit chance, so I'm pretty happy with these starting moves. The first battle with a rival goes incredibly well with us not getting hit, although it's mostly because he spent so much time using stat changing moves. Still, we have decent type coverage for this early in the game. Progress is actually pretty quick going forward since we're hitting reasonably hard with our new Icy Wind, and in spite of our massive list of weaknesses, no one is really using those types of moves yet. Even the Rock Gym ended up being pretty one-sided in spite of not at all being over level. I thought Rock Throw was really going to mess me up, but Razor Leaf is a pretty solid move this early on. The advantage doesn't last long though, as we get dealt with quickly in the Windworks. While I level up a bit, let's take another look at that move list. We don't really get a solid powerhouse move until level 36, so that's probably not happening right now. For TMs, we could learn Return or Bullet Seed, but Bullet Seed is really weak, and we don't have enough friendship for Return to really be that strong yet. We're gonna either have to hope that we freeze Perugly with Powder Snow, or just outmuscle her with Razor Leaf. A few levels later, and we get some pretty good Razor Leaf crit luck, and make short work of her. Razor Leaf is a high crit chance move though, so it only took a couple tries. Next is the Grass Gym, but as you could probably imagine, I'm not all that concerned. Gym leader time and it's nearly a one-shot sweep as you'd probably expect. I thought they'd hang on a little bit better since Icy Wind is only a 55 power move, but it went smoothly. Right after that is Team Galactic Commander Jupiter. Zubat goes down in one Icy Wind, and Skun Tank only takes two hits thanks to a critical hit. We probably would have won without it though. With that done, we can head to Heart Home. I've always had troubles with the Ghost Gym here, but I can't imagine it'll be too bad this time between Razor Leaf and Icy Wind. I'll probably need to be a higher level though, so I make sure to go out of my way to fight extra trainers. Not all the trainers though, because the lady that had a Ponyta 7 levels lower than me brought me to 5 health off one flame wheel. I am really not looking forward to fighting the Fire Trainer in the Elite Four. Ghost Gym time, and it starts rough with Duskull instantly burning us with a Will-O-Wisp, so I have to use Icy Wind to bypass the attack loss. Hunter also confuses us right away, and the next turn our 95 accuracy Icy Wind misses, so my luck is just fantastic today. It takes a few hits to beat him, but our health is terrible. Last is Miss Magius, and we instantly go down to Shadow Ball. Bad run, but I have an idea. In Heart Home, there's a lady that just randomly gives us a shell bell when you talk to her. No idea why. It's a held item that lets you restore a little bit of health every time you deal damage, so this might help. I try the Ghost Gym again, and I get to Miss Magius with more health, although it's mostly because I didn't miss Icy Wind. Miss Magius herself though is still too tough for us between her Held Berry and my own burn whittling me down. Shell Bell hardly heals us, so I just decide that I need to level a bit more. At level 36 we learn Wood Hammer, a massive 120 power grass move that deals one third of its damage back to us in recoil. 
It's dangerous, but I bet I could win the gym with this if I took another shot at it. It took a few tries, but we did end up one-shotting our way through on our third try. It's probably not the most reliable move for long fights, but for now it works. Next is another rival fight. It's mostly easy either than Ponyta. This took a few tries thanks to him using Ember and our Grass Whistle having terrible accuracy. I'd have tried to brute force it with Woodhammer, but my health was too low and I couldn't risk the recoil damage, so I had to use Icy Wind and tank my way through. The rest of his team was quick to take out, but I am not looking forward to when that Ponyta evolves. Before doing the fighting gym, I decide to top off my level at 40 so we evolve to our Obama Snow. Once I get Fly, I'll go rename him, but for now, I have a gym to attempt. Gotta say though, my stats really aren't making up for the terrible type combo. Fighting gym time and it starts great with a one-shot on Meta-type. Machoke hardly hurts us with Rock Tomb, so it only took two Razor Leafs, but Lucario is another story. Force Palm drops me below half health, as our Icy Wind hardly hurts. I tried switching for Wood Hammer, but we get critically hit with Drain Punch and instantly go down. I'm gonna need to get stronger. So it's off to grinding. Real quick while I do though, give me 30 seconds to tell you a little bit about a charity that contacted me. I recently got messaged by the No Barrier Foundation, a charity that builds classrooms in developing countries and resources hundreds of schools around the world. They've started up the Reforestation Project, where for every one pound you donate, one tree will be planted in the, probably not pronouncing this right, Kaijabe Forest in Kenya. I'm obviously not being paid for this plug, I just want to help out a charity that's doing some genuinely important work. If you want to help support the Reforestation Project, check out the link in the description to donate to them, and share your support online with the hashtag TreeSquad. And thanks for listening to me ramble on about the charity, let's get back to the challenge. Anyway, grinding is done, so it's time for a second shot at the fighting gym. Lucario hits hard with a drain punch, and a wood hammer hurts us in recoil. Second round, he paralyzes us with Force Palm, and with some good luck, we manage to hit our wood hammer for the knockout. With that done, I have one last rival fight before the water gym. Staravia went down in one hit, and second is Ponyta- Did I write- There's a Pokemon called Staravia? Is that what it's really called? I must have written that wrong. Whatever. Although it survives Wood Hammer, its Ember doesn't do too much damage. Although we do get burned, so physical moves will get pretty weak. Grottle is a one-shot with Icy Wind, and Boweasel hardly hangs on from a Razor Leaf, but he also hardly hurts us, so I have no problem ending it. Well, in the Water Gym, we level up to level 47 and learn Blizzard. Normally, this is a really unreliable move due to its bad accuracy, but during a Hailstorm, Blizzard always hits. And since our ability causes Hailstorms, this will make Blizzard incredibly powerful. Water Gym time. Gyarados is tough since I have no electric moves, so I just try to brute force it with Wood Hammer. I get critically bit, then finish it with Blizzard. Not too bad. Quagsire is double weak to Grass, so I just one-shot him with Razor Leaf, and last out is Floatzel. I remember this guy being brutal in other runs, but he hardly hurts us with Crunch, and it only takes two Razor Leaves to take him down. No problem at all. With that done, we have our first Cyrus fight. Thankfully, he isn't a problem. Much like how he was easy in our Pikachu run, he should be easy in this one too since he likes using flying types and we have Blizzard. Oh, completely unrelated, but it just came to mind. People have been wondering if I'm okay in the comments of the last few challenges because I sounded so tired. I just had a sore throat. I'm good now, don't worry about it. I've been doing a video a day for like 8 years now, my voice just gets a little sore sometimes. Don't worry about it, I'm still having fun. Now that we finally have Fly, I go back to Eterna City and find the Name Raider to change Obama Snow into his true form, Snowbama. We're also almost level 50, so let's check our stats again. It's not bad, although I was hoping for a little bit better. Blizzard has carried us through the last few routes, but I don't think that's gonna last for too much longer. Rival time, and he now has five Pokemon. Star Raptor is out first, so we already lose a stage of attack due to his Intimidate ability. I one-shot it with Blizzard, and Heracross is out. He was left with a Sliver by Blizzard, and hit us hard with Brick Break. Heracross is a beast. We finish him off and move on to Rapidash. I managed to put to sleep instantly with a Grass Whistle, and hit a Wood Hammer and a Blizzard for the knockout. If Rapidash had hit me, I'd be doomed. Torterra is now ground in Grass, so I just Blizzard for a one-shot. Last is Floatzel, so I would hammer for another one shot. The Steel Gym is one I wasn't looking forward to at all. We don't really have any great moves to deal with this gym, so I'm just happy that a lot of Steel types are dual type with something weak to ice or grass. Random trainer fights are weird in this run, by the way, because most are easy, then you occasionally get ones that nearly one shot us, like the Scizor using X Scissor. Byron time, but we get beat down hard. Metal Sound to drop our special defense and flash cannon to make short work of our health. I'm gonna need either good sleep luck with our 55 accuracy grass whistle, or to level up more. 
I decide to grind an Iron Island, mostly because it's loaded with trainers that I haven't fought yet. The levels here are good, and there are plenty of ground types that we have an easy time with, so it's a pretty good place to grind. I try again at level 56. This run is incredible. Megneton gets one shot by a critical blizzard, Bastiodon tanks a blizzard and hits us with a reasonably weak stone edge, but we have nothing better so we just blizzard a second time and end up freezing him solid. That gives us a free chance to finish him off with a third blizzard. Last is Steelix and we one shot him with blizzard. That was a really clean fight. There's a few Team Galactic Commanders we have to fight before we get to the next gym, but they're really not a problem in this run, mostly thanks to Blizzard. I'm sure no one will complain if we just skip ahead a little bit. You know, I've always thought this part of the game was really cool. Anytime you have to go through Mount Coronet or go on a long trek to get to a new location is a really interesting change of pace. If they ever make a remake of Gen 4, I really hope that they put more emphasis on the foreboding presence that Mount Coronet is on the region, and make you go through it maybe a couple more times before getting to the top. I think there's some real potential to make it a really creepy and mysterious place. I don't know, maybe put like a legendary in the basement, in like a foggy, misty basement with a bunch of water or something, and occasionally if you turn up the sound real loud you can hear it roaring in the distance through the game. I don't know, you could do something cool here. Anyway, I start on the ice gym, and I can't even take down Sneasel in one Razor Leaf without a crit. Slash hardly hurts me, so I just use another Razor Leaf, and she uses a Hyper Potion, but I crit. Pillow Swine goes down in one Razor Leaf, and we end up with an Obama Snow Mirror Match. I miss Grass Whistle four times in a row as we get beat down with Focus Blast till I faint. Okay, that was just awful luck. That's like flipping a coin and getting tails four times in a row. I think I can do this again. Second try in Obama Snow goes way better. I still miss Grass Whistle, and I get hit with a critical Focus Blast, but at least my second Grass Whistle hits, and my Wood Hammer did somewhat decent damage. My health is dire, and I thought it was all over when she healed Obama Snow with a full restore, but then I tried Blizzard, and for whatever reason, it did amazing damage. I finish it right after with Razor Leaf, and last is Frost Slash. Blizzard hits pretty hard, and she tries to build double teams, but even after all of her healing items, I hang on from her own Blizzard and finish it with a Wood Hammer, with three health left after the recoil. That was an amazing fight. So while we watch this dork get bullied by Team Galactic, I should point out by this point in the game, there's a lot of filler that you aren't seeing. I typically just like to show you guys the progress, but around here is where the plot kidnaps you, and you can't go to the next town with a gym due to a power outage. Apparently you just can't go into a town if they have no power. I don't get it. Regardless, the Team Galactic HQ isn't that hard, just a bit slow. At the top, we get our second from last Cyrus fight, so let's do that. Sneasel is a one-shot with a critical Razor Leaf, Crobat hits Poison Fang and badly poisons us, but goes down in one Blizzard, and Honchkrow goes down also in one Blizzard. Man, it's weird how weak his team is here, and how strong his team gets in, like, half an hour later in the game. Not half an hour for us, though, I mean half an hour for a normal player doing a normal playthrough, because I've got to grind. There's no way I'm beating the next Cyrus fight without more levels, so I spend more time grinding in Mount Cornet. I'm sure you remember this spot from my last two Gen 4 runs. It's a decent enough spot to grind, and we always gain at least a level per trip, so it's really not that bad. The double battle where we team up with our useless rival goes about as slow as you'd expect, but at least it's not hard like in the Abra challenge. Then it's time for the Distortion World. There's no way anyone on Earth wants to watch me do this, so let's just do the Cyrus fight. First he sends out Houndoom and I'm already terrified. Woodhammer leaves him with a sliver, and he nails a brutal flamethrower, leaving us with 18 health. I'm just lucky that the hail finished him off. Second is Crobat, and he's faster than me, so he finished me off with a cross poison. Well, that attempt sucked. Second try and I used Blizzard instead, and through ungodly luck, he was frozen solid, and I finished him off with Woodhammer. I was just hoping for a damage range, honestly. Crobat is a one-shot with Blizzard, but not before he confuses us. Honchkrow is also a one-shot, so fourth out is Weavile. He flinches us with Fake Out, hits Night Slash, we hit ourselves in confusion, then he hits a Brutal X Scissor, and finally we hit our Woodhammer for a one-shot. Man, we took a lot of unnecessary damage in that fight. Last is Gyarados, and our attack is down from Intimidate, so I try for Blizzard for massive damage as he Ice Fangs us. He then uses a full restore, so it's not over yet, and he survives our Blizzard, but at least we're healed a bit off Shell Bell. We're out of Blizzards, but his health is low, so Razor Leaf manages to finish him off and get us the win. 
With that done, we can finally fight the final gym leader. Jolteon is a one-shot with a blizzard, so second is Raichu. Woodhammer one-shots him as well, but we got paralyzed from static in the process. Third is Luxray, who hammered us with a Fire Fang that also flinches us. The second Fire Fang brings us to a quarter health as Blizzard takes him out. Last is Electrovire, who brings us to one health with Fire Punch, as we're too paralyzed to move and we're finished off with a quick attack. Why does the Electric Gym Leader know so many fire moves? I guess it's because he's friends with Flint. On the second try, I one-shot his entire team with Blizzard. Well, that was wildly different. I guess his whole team was within a damage range, so all it took was a little bit of luck. I always get lost in Victory Road in Gen 4, so while I find my way through and grind a little bit, let me show you what I was so worried about. This is Flint, a member of the Elite Four. Now, you've seen how much even one mediocre Pokemon with a solid fire move messes us up. Well, five powerhouse fire type Pokemon, some of them being way faster than me, is probably going to result in me getting a one shot on any given one of them. So I went through the secret entrance of the Wayward Cave all the way to the end to get the TM for Earthquake, the best move that we're going to be able to get that deals with fire types. Then I spent some time hunting down a handful of rare candies just in case I end up needing to max out my level. After that, I grind up to level 80, a level that I'm comfortable in at least attempting the Elite Four at. Here's our stats. They're good, but they're not going to make up for that type combo. Take your chance to guess on if I- Oh right, I forgot about my rival. First is Star Raptor, so naturally we one-shot it, but we're down a little bit of attack from Intimidate. Heracross takes big damage off a critical Earthquake, but hangs on and hits us hard with close combat. We finish it with a second Earthquake. Rapidash easily could have taken us out, but we get a critical Earthquake for a one-shot. That's two in one battle. Floatzel is a one-shot with Woodhammer, but next is Snorlax. I go for Blizzard and actually manage to nearly one-shot him, much to my surprise. He hits us hard with a critical Body Slam, but a second Blizzard finishes him off. I guess I was wrong to be worried. Last is Torterra, who obviously just gets one-shot with Blizzard. Okay, with that done, make your guesses on if we can win or not. Let's do this. First is Bug Trainer Aaron. Yenmega is a one-shot with Blizzard. Scizor hardly gets hurt with a wood hammer though and nails us with a powerful X-Scissor. I switch for Earthquake and manage to finish him off. Vespaquen is part flying, so I go for Blizzard and one-shot it, so fourth is Heracross. Earthquake doesn't do much and we get hit incredibly hard with close combat. I switch for Blizzard and finish him off, but I only have 71 health after the Shell Bell heal. Last is Drapion though, so I one-shot him with Blizzard. Between fights, I heal up, use an Aetheron Blizzard, and move on. Second is Grand Trainer Bertha. Nothing to recap here though, one-shot sweep with Woodhammer and Blizzard. Third is the dreaded Fire Trainer Flint. Despite being the thing I was worried about the whole game, it ended up being a total one-shot sweep with Earthquake. Funny thing is, it had to be. If I didn't one-shot everyone here, no doubt they could have one-shot me. The fact that we could learn Earthquake is the only reason I won this fight. Fourth is Psychic Trainer Lucian. Mr. Mime was a one-shot with Earthquake, and Bronzong just used Calm Mind, so I two-shot him. Our amazing luck started with Gallade missing Stone Edge that would have done a sizable amount of damage to us, giving us a chance to win in two blizzards. Fourth is Espeon, and I ended up critically hitting with Earthquake, so he never had a chance to use Signal Beam on us. Last is Alkazam, and he missed his Focus Blast, so we one-shotted him with Woodhammer. That was three amazingly lucky exchanges in a row. Finally, it's Pokemon Champion Cynthia. Spiritomb gets one shot with Blizzard, Lucario somehow got one shot with Earthquake, Togekiss got one shot by Blizzard, Roserade got one shot by Blizzard, but Garchomp is faster than me and dropped me by half my health with Flamethrower. Then I one shot him with Blizzard since he's double weak to ice. Last was Melodic, who is a one shot with Woodhammer. Well, I don't know how she got to be the Pokemon Champion. That was a strange one. I really didn't think that so many battles would be one shot or get one shot with a Pokemon that has decent health and defense. I'm not 100% sure what I'll do for next Saturday's Pokemon challenge, but you guys always suggest doing a babies only run in Gen 2, so maybe I'll try for that. Subscribe, ring the bell, and stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also, check out the playlists in the description if you want to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend Wadageek and I are doing a Gen 1 randomizer over on his channel linked in the description. Also, come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. 
Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.